Good evening, Good evening. And, and happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Welcome to our Thanksgiving Eve service this evening here at Shepherd of the Lakes Lutheran Church, where it is our joy as always to share our shepherd with you, no matter who you may be. Welcome you who are in attendance. We welcome those who are streaming online. If you are streaming, we'd love to let you uh, love for you to let us know in the comments below. Um, tonight um, is a little bit of a, a quieter night tonight as we kind of introduce a little bit of a new service. Um, it's called Compline, also known as Prayer at Close of Day. It is a service that is meant to be a little bit more meditative, a little bit more contemplative as we, we end the day focusing on our Lord. And what a, what, a, what a fitting service then as we are moving into a holiday where it's all about reflection, a holiday all about thanksgiving. So tonight as we walk through this service, we will reflect on what we have. Be thankful for that and recognize how good our God is that he gives all of these things to us. We'll talk more about that in our service. Our service is going to be printed out entirely for you in your worship folder. Uh, today you'll find all of the music and all of the readings available for you on the screens today. Um, as we go through this service, there are some in here who are familiar with it, so we're going to uh, walk through it and uh, lead each other through it. Um, we will begin um, right away with our, our opening song responses. We continue with our hymn, Praise the, uh, Praise the Almighty, My Soul Adore Him.
Our help is in the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Let us confess our sins in the presence of God and of one another. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you in our thoughts, in our words, in our deeds, and in all that we have not done. Forgive us in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Deliver and restore us that we may rest in peace. By the mercy of God, we are redeemed by Jesus Christ, and in him we are forgiven. Let us rest in his peace until the rising of the sun, when we shall serve him in newness of life. Amen. We continue now with God's word selected for today, beginning with a reading from 2 Samuel chapter 7. These words will serve as our sermon text for today. Then King David went in and sat before the Lord, and he said, Who am I, sovereign Lord? And what is my family that you have brought me this far? And as if this were not enough in your sight, sovereign Lord, you have also spoken about the future of the house of your servant. And this decree, sovereign Lord, is for a mere human. What more can David say to you? For you know your servant, sovereign Lord. For the sake of your word and according to your will, you have done this great thing and made it known to your servant. How great you are, sovereign Lord. There is no one like you and there is no God but you, as we have heard with our own ears. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue now with our psalm of the day, Psalm 110b from our new Psalter, All People That on Earth Do, do, do Dwell, uh, available for you on the screens. continue with our second reading taken from James chapter 1. When we give thanks, we remember not just that we are thankful, but we're thankful to someone, the one from whom all good things come. Don't be deceived, my dear brothers and sisters. 
Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. He chose to give us birth through the word of truth, that we might be a kind of first fruits of all he created. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. Please stand for the gospel reading. Our gospel for this morning is taken from Luke chapter 19. Here we really see how the gospel works. How the gospel works thanksgiving in the heart of the believer. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was. But because he was so short, he could not see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him, since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter, He has gone to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, Here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor, and if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is the son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise Praise be to you, O Christ. We continue now with a sung response. You may be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. When Thanksgiving is over, when the meal is done, the table is cleared, maybe the guests are leaving or everybody has left from the table, what do you do? Do you just throw everything in the sink, soak it until tomorrow, put your feet up and slowly slip into a mashed potato-induced coma? Do you find yourself still sitting there around the table with a cup of coffee or a glass of wine, having gone down countless, countless conversation rabbit holes? Do you find yourself sitting back and reflecting? thinking about the day that has gone by and thinking about the the namesake of that holiday, thinking about Thanksgiving. Do you reflect on that? What has been given to you and the one to whom, or the, the one who has given it to you? In our reading today, David had done a lot of reflecting. And in his reflection, he was led to recognize and declare something incredible. And as we look at this account of David, as we look at the parallels to our own life, we come to that same great conclusion. We come to this great thought, and we declare with him, how great is God? Now, if one were to look at the context of this reading, you may have a, another thought at first. A thought that says, well, how great is David? David, because everything up to this point has been talking about 
uh, David and his ruling as king, how much he had done for the kingdom of Israel, how much he had done in service to his God, how he had lived this faithful life as king. Conquest after conquest, he had taken care of all of God's enemies. He had uh, expanded the borders of Israel to as far as they would ever be. He had ushered in a golden age for the people of Israel. He had brought about this spiritual renewal among the people. And now he was at rest, done with his wars, uh, done with any danger or threats to the kingdom. And now here he sat at rest and at peace in his beautiful palace and enjoying the, the fruit of all of his labor. But David wasn't satisfied. In fact, he was guilty. He was guilty because he was stuck in this wonderful palace while the ark of God was sitting in a meager tent. And so he wanted to do something about that. He wanted to give God a house for his ark, to give God this wonderful place to dwell among his people in the city of Jerusalem. And so he went to work planning and strategizing what was going to take place. But he never did get to building it. Because as he was planning, God sent the prophet Nathan to tell David, you're not going to do this for me. This isn't what you're going to give to me. In fact, I've got something to give to you. I am going to give you a house. God would establish David's kingdom by bringing about that, that ultimate king through his line, by bringing that promised Savior by that saving work, God would establish the Savior as, as King of all and He would reign forever and ever. And this would come from David's line, from David's own family. Now, David didn't get upset that he didn't get what he wanted to, to do this thing for God. Instead, he heads off to where the Ark of God was. He goes to stand before God. And on the way, he reflects on what God had said he would do. And when he got there, he sat before the Lord and he says, Who am I, Sovereign Lord? And what is my family that you have brought me this far? And as if this were not enough in your sight, Sovereign Lord, you have also spoken about the future of the house of your servant. David couldn't help but reflect and give thanks and praise for where God had gotten him at this point, taking him from a lowly shepherd to making him the greatest king in Israelite history, to blessing him with, with family and children, with, with riches and wealth and peace. But he points this out, that that wasn't enough for God. In fact, the words David uses, Lord, this is too little for you to give to me. God had something greater planned for David. He had his salvation and his eternal life in mind. But as David considered that, as he reflected on these things God had said, he recognized something incredible about the way God had blessed him and was going to bless him. Who was he? Who was David that God would do something like this? Well, maybe the, the answer would be, well, David, you are king. You're the greatest king in, in Israelite history. You have this amazing reputation. Look at all you have done. Look at all you have accomplished. Look at your obedience to your God. Are you not deserving of this? But as David stands there before the holy righteous God, as he considers what God himself says, he himself recognizes himself as a mere human. What's wrong with that? Well, as God says, what humans are. Like every other human, David was a sinner. And as he himself points out in Psalm 51, he was a sinner from birth, undeserving of anything from God. And yet, though he didn't deserve it, God still does it. He still wanted to do this for David. For the sake of your word and according to your will, you have done this great thing and made it known to your servant. 
David reflects on who God is. That he is a God of grace, a God of undeserved love, one who is merciful and compassionate. He doesn't give because people need to work for it. He doesn't give because people have earned or deserved it. He gives because he is gracious. He gives because he loves to give. He loves his people, his children. And that left David speechless. What more can David say to you? How great you are, sovereign Lord. There is no one like you, and there is no God but you, as we have heard with our own ears. As he reflected, all he could do was marvel and give thanks. He recognized that the sovereign Lord, the all-powerful and all-compassionate God, was the one and only, and was the one and only one to do this for him. And so he was the one and only one deserving of thanks. And that's something for us to reflect on during this time. We have so many things to be thankful for that that one holiday is not enough for us. And we can think about how far our God has brought us to in those times. But have we really reflected on that? Have we really considered the reason we have these blessings? We know that, yes, they come from God. God gives us these things. But are we worthy of them? Are we truly deserving of what we have? Sometimes there's a problem where maybe our our words of spoken thanks kind of hide our thoughts and attitudes of entitlement. Yes, we give thanks, but we give thanks for the things that deep down we think we deserve. We are deserving because of how hard we work. We are entitled because of who we are and what we have done for our God, so we should be getting these things. But if we seriously reflect, just as David has done, if we ask that question, who am I that God does this? And as we reflect on who God says that I am from birth, we find ourselves not as worthy or deserving as we might think. For if we look at ourselves in accord with God's word, we find ourselves admitting the same thing, that we are a mere human, that we are just human. And that means that we are sinful. That means from the moment that we were born, we stood opposed to, to God and His will. We stood as His enemies. We had been created to to give God our everything, our heart and our soul and our strength, yet because we are sinful, we wanted nothing to do with that. We turned away from Him and disowned Him. And what's worse is we took the things that God has given to us to use to be a blessing. We turned them into tools for our own sinful ambition. We use them to to strive after what we desire instead of what God wills. Or maybe we look at those things that God wants to richly bless us and we despise them, we ignore them because they're not what we want. They're not what we think we deserve. Or maybe it's the opposite. That we take these things that God has given to us and we turn them into our idols. We turn them into our false gods, putting them ahead of the one who has given them to us in the first place. When we look and see that we're someone like that, we recognize we're not worthy. We don't deserve the things that we have. In fact, if we were in God's shoes and someone treated us that way, it would be very easy for us to not want to give someone that at all. But tonight we reflect on our God and recognize that He's not like everyone else. That He's not like you and I. Because He gives like no one else does. Because he simply gives on account of his love. He gives simply because he desires to bless his people. He wants to bless his children. He wants to bless you. 
His people, His dear children, who He made His own through baptism, who He wrapped in Christ's righteousness, who He brought to saving faith. You are His child. And He loves to give to His children. Not because you have done anything to earn it, but simply because He wants to bless you. And He does. And he lavishes those blessings on you. He pours them out over you and over you. Simply reflect on how he has gotten you this far, to where he has brought you, how he has blessed you in your homes, in your pantries, in your closets. Think about the family and the friends and the loved ones that he has given to you to be a blessing to you. Ponder how he has advanced you in your work and your job to provide for yourself and your family. Consider the the rights and the privileges and the liberties and the freedoms that you have in this country. How great is God that He has brought you this far in your life. But you know what? Though He lavishes those things and He loves to do that, to give you these, these earthly blessings, it's not enough for Him. It is too little of a thing to to lavishly bless us here in this earth with temporary things. He loves you so much that He wants you to have perfect, eternal blessings. And He loved you so much that He sent His Son to provide those things for you. He gave you His greatest blessing in His Son, Jesus Christ, who came to live for you to die for you, to rise from the grave for you, to be a king for you. The one to come from that line of kings to be that eternal great king. To come and conquer sin, death, and the devil. The one to reign over you, to bless you, to guide you. This one who was perfect, who was sinless. He is the one that gave God everything in your place. And He is the one who gave up everything for you so that you could have it all. Forgiveness of sins. Peace with your God that you no longer stand separate from Him. You now have the certain hope and peace of eternal life that you get to be there with your God free from this world of sin and death. This is how great your God is. That He would deliver you from sin. That He would deliver all of us from sin so that we could enjoy those eternal blessings with Him forever. So what more can we say to God other than He's great? There is no one else like Him. He is the only God. And what a God He is. And this is what we get to reflect upon as we consider what to be thankful for today. May this be what you continue to reflect as you celebrate your thanksgiving. Let this be what you continue to reflect on in all of your days to come. Continue to reflect on what your own ears have heard. The sovereign Lord who provides you with everything that you need physically is also the one who gives you everything that you need spiritually. And that's pretty great. Amen. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We will continue now with our hymn of the day, Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise.
Hear my prayer, O Lord. Listen to my cry. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. In righteousness I shall see you. When I await, your presence will give me joy. Be present, O merciful God, and protect us through the silent hours of this night, so that we who are wearied by the changes and chances of this fleeting world may rest in your eternal changelessness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, support us all day long, till the shadows lengthen, and the evening comes, and the busy world is hushed, and the fever of life is over, and our work is done. Then in your mercy, grant us a safe lodging and a holy rest and peace at the last. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, our Father, by your mercy and might, the world turns safely into darkness and returns again to light. We place into your hands our unfinished tasks, our unsolved problems, and our unfulfilled hopes, knowing that only what you bless will prosper. To your great love and protection we commit each other and all those we love, knowing that you alone are our sure defender, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who watch or work or weep this night, and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, give rest to the weary, pity the afflicted, soothe the suffering, bless the dying, and all for your love's sake. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Look down, O Lord, from your heavenly throne, and illuminate this night with your celestial brightness, that by night as by day your people may glorify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We join together to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and keep us. Amen. You may be seated. We will close this evening with our, O oh, bless the Lord my soul.
evening to all of you. I'll just, uh, uh, two quick announcements this evening. A reminder uh, that going forward, um, we will be having our uh, midweek Advent services the next three Wednesdays. The next three Wednesdays we'll be meeting same time uh, at 6.30 here. Um, and before you go, there was a lot of leftover food, food from today's uh, funeral lunch for Mary and Charles. There is a lot of it, and the family wished for it to be eaten up. Uh, we've got it in the back there. You are free to, to sit, stick around and have a bite to eat, or you are also free to take some of that home with you. There's a lot in there, so don't feel uh, greedy or anything like that. Plenty of sandwiches, um, I believe some what, uh, pickles, and is there fruit in there as well? Okay. Uh, yeah, but uh, feel free to take some of that stuff home with you this evening. Uh, may the Lord bless your evening.